Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're on the home stretch for uh, Bazinga. Uh, thank you for spending the last uh, last few few hours, uh, some some of your time in your last few hours with me, to learn a little bit more about Sundial. Uh, Sundial is a Canadian-based LP. Uh, we have operations in Canada and the UK, and Sundial completed an IPO on the Nasdaq in August of this year. Sundell breaks our business down into three segments. We, we call HEAL, which is medical cannabis, prescription-based, HELP, which is uh, over-the-counter health and wellness products, and PLAY, which is recreational or adult-use cannabis. This is the management team of Sundell, and you'll notice by the logos, uh, all the well-known uh, international uh, CPG companies. And I've heard a lot about CPG here this week. Uh, Sundial was built from the beginning to be a CPG company. All the principles of, of consumer packaged goods, as I think uh, we all know, apply in cannabis. Uh, certainly brand loyalty, brand development, uh, responsiveness to consumers, and uh, customer loyalty, all of those apply. And, and Sundial was built from the beginning to be a CPG company. Uh, all of the executives have deep experience, and these are some of the, some of the previous experiences of the executive team and uh, also a, a tremendous amount of experience in uh, social media and, uh, and digital media. Uh, the executive chairman was the founder of a company called Critical Mass, which was one of the first digital media companies. I want to start with a discussion about play, uh, the first, first business, business segment. And as I mentioned, this is, uh, is um, recreational or adult use cannabis. And that's the base of our business in Canada. As a CPG company, we started by um, studying consumers and, and trying to understand consumer motivations and consumer need states. And this slide is just an example of some of that work that was done. This is based on, on uh, consumer experience with the product. And these consumer, uh, this consumer research helped to inform us on, on the brands that we developed. And that led us to this brand uh, portfolio. This is our base brands. And uh, the x-axis that you look at is uh, showing the amount of experience with cannabis. The y-axis really represents pricing and premium pricing moving towards the top end of the axis. So it, our brand portfolio starts with the Sundial brand, which is the most uh, friendly brand, the uh, um, a functional and, uh, and ease of entry brand. The BC Weed Co. brand, uh, moving to the right on the screen, that brand is is based on the uh, history and status and reputation of, of BC Weed, which is, I think, well known around the world and really leverages that, uh, that history. The Top Leaf brand on the further right is the super premium brand for uh, really designed to get for uh, connoisseurs, and that is our, our highest quality, highest price, uh, and best, best strains included in that brand. So the idea is to develop a full range of brands so that there's a, a product for every consumer. So uh, how do we grow the best cannabis? We, we thought this through and, and believe that there's, there's four components that go into growing the best cannabis. The, the first one is legendary growers. Uh, that profile is an actual person. He's, he's 50 years old, not 18, as you would think. Uh, but uh, we took growers out of the, the gray market in Canada. We uh, gave them uh, an opportunity to come into into the light of day and to work in our facilities. And these people who had a lot of experience and a lot of pride around what they do, all of a sudden had access to, to uh, facilities and resources beyond what they'd ever had. And it's a powerful combination. They brought with them, and we have developed an extensive library of genetics, uh, um, about 1,500 strains in total. So a uh, significant amount of genetics that we can choose from. We also grow in, in what we think are best in class facilities. All of our grow in Canada is in modular indoor grow rooms. Each room is designed identical to the other one uh, so that they're completely standard and com can completely be, uh, um, all of the inputs can be adjusted for each strain. So including the, the temperature, the humidity, the, the uh, light, the water, the fertilization, the nutrition, everything can be adjusted and customized for those plants and can be adjusted in each, each plant. Each room is about 3,000 square feet, has about 2,100 square feet of grow space. 
Uh, but in total, we have 114 rooms at our flagship facility in Olds, which allows us to really uh, grow uh, on, a, on a craft basis, but to do it at scale. Uh, and small batch cultivation is the fourth input, which, uh, um, which really gives us that advantage of, of, uh, of being able to grow craft at scale. These are some examples of, of uh, some of the product offerings. And uh, we started in 2019. Our first offering was a product called Zenberry. And uh, just to refer to some of the names, and, and which really try to describe the experiences, Citrus Punch and Lemon Riot. And uh, a lot of time and effort went into designing these products, which all under the Sundial umbrella and, uh, um, and with different experiences based on those consumer need states and motivations. We continue to innovate with the phase 2.0 products in Canada with proprietary vape pens and uh, packaging that uh, we're working under the regulations to make it more attractive and uh, make it more appealing to consumers. We also are developing an extension in CBD. I'm going to talk a little bit about our CBD uh, production facility that, was, that we acquired in the UK. but. Um, this is an uh, example of what this will look like, CBD products under the Sundial Natural brands, also under the Sundial umbrella, but developing a, a, a brand that can translate globally and be exported into other markets, including uh, from the UK to Europe and to the US. This is uh, some branding from the Top Leaf brand. This is our most premium product, will include our highest quality strains including some strains that were Cannabis Cup winners. Some of our growers uh, participated in the Cannabis Cup and those strains uh, were award winners, which uh, I think is, is uh, very appealing to the canna as, as as we call them. This is the BC Weed Co brand. Uh, obviously a much more fun brand and as I said, leveraging the, the West Coast history and tradition the uh, tuna can packaging, uh, a tribute to that, uh, to that, that West, Coast, uh, West Coast lifestyle, and uh, just a lot more brighter and fun, and fun brand, but really leveraging that BC history. So in Canada, we have uh, right now, as you can see from this slide, 77 rooms that are under production, uh, two, just under 300,000 square feet and uh, 40 rooms that have been constructed and are awaiting licensing, and then eight rooms that are under construction in BC, in, Merritt is in, in BC, and that's where this BC Weed Co. product will be grown so that it's authentic and originates in BC. So a total of just under uh, 500,000 square feet of indoor grow space in, in 125 rooms when this construction is complete early in 2020. Current uh, capacity on a, on a run rate is about 65 million grams, and uh, that will be increased when we're fully built out to about 100 million grams of, of run rate capacity. The right-hand part of the slide where you see the teal bars is just demonstrating the increase in yields. We've done over 250 harvests now, and the advantage of these small rooms, small batch cultivation, is that we have a lot of data points to work from. And from those data points, we can continually adjust and improve the uh, conditions, recipes, all the inputs into those products. And, uh, and you see the teal bars, uh, the trend to increasing yields. So this is a map of Canada. And uh, Sundell has been started rolling out across Canada, starting in Alberta. Uh, and only in the first half, all of our sales were in Alberta. Uh, you can see the AGLC banner representing Alberta. Then moving east across Canada and coming back in the, in the blue uh, shading to, to BC. We've now covered uh, all of the Canadian provinces with the exception of Quebec and we'll continue to move into Quebec as, as we have more product available. As I mentioned, we in the first half of 2019 only sold one, one product. Uh, one strain and then introduced two new strains in the summer this year and those strains were have been very well received very excited with the with the reception in the retail markets and then the top leaf brand our premium our super premium brand will be in stores in Canada in uh, this quarter and then the BC Weco brand coming on in 2020. So having established our, our play uh, segment in Canada 
uh, we looked up and looked at what our next expansion opportunity would be. And uh, we looked at, at Europe, 750 million uh, potential uh, customers with uh, a wealthy developed economy and uh, a great interest in CBD. Um, certainly not as advanced as it is in the US, but we thought we could have a real first mover advantage there. Uh, UK was a leader in the CBD market. Uh, CBD products are on the shelves in the UK in pharmacies now. So we looked in, uh, around and we found an acquisition of a company called Bridge Farm. Uh, it, Bridge Farm had one and a half million square feet of indoor uh, glasshouse grow and uh, a company that had been established for a long time, a family owned company that's been growing uh, edible herbs and potted plants for over 30 years and has established themselves and, uh, as, as a uh, low cost producer and also established some tremendous distribution channels of products that are for human consumption, edible herbs, uh, which will be very useful as Sundell un unveils uh, our, our distribution of CBD products, which again for human use or consumption, being a, a trusted supplier of a local traceable safe and secure supply chain is a, is a big advantage for us and was a big part of this acquisition. Um, located in the UK, obviously a great jumping off point for Europe and for, for uh, the rest of the world. This uh, slide just shows uh, the facilities that we acquired, about 1.6 million square feet of greenhouse space. Uh, Clay Lake phase two, 800, another 800 thousand square feet of grow space is in construction now and uh, and then there's uh, opportunity for expansion in in further phases as we go important to note that uh, the low cost production in the UK comes from two factors there's two big inputs into producing cannabis or, and into producing potted plants and edible herbs which is what they have been doing up till now and uh, the two biggest inputs are, are people and power and uh, they have become very automated over time and uh, managed to optimize and really minimize the number of people. So even though these facilities are enormous, there's very few people in the facilities. The, the key factor behind that is that the plants actually are on rolling tables and move to the people. So instead of the people moving all the way around an enormous facility and spending a tremendous amount of time walking from station to station, the plants are on rolling tables and come to all the people. And uh, um, along with other automation that works for spacing plants, planting plugs, it has become very efficient in terms of the number of people that are required to operate that facility. Secondly, uh, power is the next largest component and, and uh, Sundial uses uh, biomass boilers and receives a green energy credit from the UK government. So that cost of power is completely offset. So all of the heat is provided uh, provided through these biomass boilers and with the credits, it's, it actually offsets all of the costs. So um, with redu reduction of, to minimization of the cost for heat and for people, the cost of production is extremely low. It will be competitive with outdoor grow in, in Latin America or African countries. Through the business that they've established there, they are in all the retail channels for, for the major grocery retailers and big box stores, Aldi, Asda, Lidl, Morrisons, Tesco, and those companies have distribution channels that extend throughout the UK and into Europe and, and around the world. The next step for Sundial is clearly going to be in the heel area. Uh, at the moment we have uh, just begun our direct to patient sales program. That's something we're gonna to continue to expand in Canada and internationally, and uh, then alter ultimately move to, uh, to opportunity to develop pharmaceuticals. In the meantime, uh, Sundial is, is a, involved in a joint venture uh, called Pathway Research, and uh, they're looking at a wide range of, of applications of cannabis for uh, medical and, um, and other conditions and uh, including cancer, inflammatory processes, skin disorders, and, um, and we'll continue to, uh, um, to, fund, to fund that work in addition to uh, other research opportunities that we have in Canadian universities and, and research institutions. 
So uh, Sundial is going to release our earnings on November 13th, so there's not uh, very much that I can talk about about uh, Q3, but I did want to just put up a slide and talk briefly about uh, financial performance for the first half of 2019. And uh, Sundial's first sales started in Q1, looking at the teal bars. The first sales started in, uh, in Q1 of a relatively modest one and a half million. Uh, the important thing to note is the ramp in, uh, in Q2 up to 19 million, 1300% uh, increase. Uh, very exciting and that ramp continues as we, as we add more uh, rooms and bring those rooms onto production. The other important point I'd like to note on this slide is the blue bars represent adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA is, uh, is generally being used as a proxy for cash flow and uh, we are effectively very close to, uh, to being uh, um, even on adjusted e EBITDA, so b basically a break-even position, which uh, in the second quarter of our operations during an, an extreme ramp-up is uh, something that, was, that uh, was a great achievement for Sundial that we're very proud of. We completed the, um, completed the acquisition of, of Bridge Farm in the first quarter uh, sorry, in the third quarter on J July 2nd. So in those financial results, there's, n there's nothing included for Bridge Farm, but Bridge Farm will be uh, consolidated with the, with the Sundial results in Q3 and moving forward. So a, a quick look at some of the recent achievements of Sundial. Uh, in May of this year, we completed a $93 million uh, convertible note issue. All of those notes have been converted to equity. Then uh, at the end of June, we completed a $160 million private debt placement. We've drawn $115 million of that, of that placement and there, at least $45 million available for, for future drawing under, under certain conditions. And we used those funds to make the Bridge Farm acquisition that we've spoken about. Um, we completed, as I mentioned, over 250 harvests to date, uh, providing an, a lot of data points and a lot of opportunities for us to, to continue to uh, dial in the rooms that we're using and dial in the strains that we're growing. In, on August 1st, we had our IPO transaction, raised 143 million US dollars gross proceeds. Uh, later in August, received uh, Health Canada pro approval for the full build out of our facility in uh, Olds, where our flagship facility is located, Olds, Alberta. Introduced the, the new brands, as I mentioned to you before. And then at the end of August, uh, closed a, a syndicated debt facility with an Alberta based financial institution. 140 million facility. We've drawn 86 million of that facility, and uh, continue to work on the remainder. And those funds will be applied to uh, to construction of the of the facility. Mm -hmm.